finally, in this video, I want to make the point that we can actually work backwards from an NBO description of an excited state, the NBO electron configuration, say n pi star or pi pi star, to a natural Lewis structure for the excited state. The Lewis structure that makes the most sense based on the way we populated electrons in the NBO and based on their shapes, where those orbitals live in space. So let's do this for the n pi star and pi pi star states. So first, let's think about the n pi star state and remind ourselves here that the n pi star state is characterized by one electron in the pi star orbital, one electron in the former HOMO, which is an n orbital, and let's actually keep in mind that the pi orbital here still contains two electrons. We can locate each of these orbitals in space, right? The n orbital is located on the carbonyl oxygen. The pi star orbital is located between the carbon and oxygen with a greater lobe on carbon. We're going to use that idea when we go to draw the Lewis structure. And the pi orbital is located between the carbon and oxygen with a greater lobe on oxygen. One of the first things we can do is understand that the carbonyl oxygen has radical character as a result of the singly occupied n orbital. So let me do some highlighting to make this make sense. This electron right here corresponds to this electron that is located in the n orbital. Right, and we can make that connection because of the NBO system. This n orbital is a hybrid or a filled uh, 2p orbital located on the oxygen atom. Well, what about the pi electrons? Well, one pi electron is occupying the pi star orbital. And the larger lobe in that orbital is located on the carbonyl carbon. We actually saw that when we looked at polarized NBOs. And so it makes sense, on, to some extent, right, to an approximation, to the Lewis approximation, it makes some sense to localize that electron on the carbonyl carbon. We can draw this to some extent because this pi star orbital is located mostly on the carbonyl carbon. Its larger lobe is at the carbonyl carbon. Now what about the pi electrons? Well, we could do this a couple of different ways, right? One thing to note about the pi bond is that it's partially broken. And we know that because the pi star orbital is partially occupied. And so it may make sense to think about that pi bond as completely broken and draw a structure like this with the pi electrons living on oxygen. Because after all, oxygen is the atom with the bigger lobe in the pi orbital. So to some extent, this Lewis structure makes sense. And if we just briefly take account of, of charges here for a second, we'll realize that all of the atoms are formally neutral. I'll leave you to verify that on your own. And so we're actually, we're actually done. This is a reasonable Lewis structure of the n pi star excited state. That said, it may make sense to still consider the pi bond intact, right? Because there are, after all, two bonding electrons still, two pi bonding electrons to only one pi antibonding electron. And so it may also make sense, or this may be an alternative resonance form of the structure in which we retain those unpaired electrons in their natural positions based on the n orbital, which we'll highlight here in, in red on the oxygen, and the pi star orbital, which we've highlighted in blue, where that electron is living mostly on the carbonyl carbon. But now we retain the carbon-oxygen double bond, because we might argue there is still some bonding character here, right, based on the count of bonding and antibonding electrons. Now we have a formal charge situation that is actually of great interest. If we count the electrons around this carbon formally, we'll realize there are five electrons around this carbon. This leads us to the conclusion that the carbonyl carbon is formally negative. On the other hand, if we look at oxygen, we'll realize there are only five electrons around the carbonyl oxygen, formally speaking. This gives the carbonyl oxygen a positive formal charge. So this charged alternative resonance form may in some cases be a valid or useful description of the n pi star excited state. And to some extent, and this is an interesting point we'll return to later, the spin multiplicity of the excited state, whether we're talking about singlet or triplet 
plays into this. More on that later, we'll return to this point certainly in later discussions of carbonyls, if not in this lesson. But uh, either of these structures I would say is valid, and they're reasonable resonance structures given the orbital occupation for the n pi star state. Now let's talk about the pi pi star state and do a similar kind of analysis. And so how do we get started drawing this excited state? Well, nothing's going on with the sigma system. Probably should have mentioned that over here. And so we can just go ahead and draw the sigma bonds as normal. We have an electron that is occupying the pi star orbital. And given our prior argument that the lobe of that orbital is larger on carbon, we should throw down an electron there. And let's do some highlighting to emphasize that, that this is located here because of the shape of the pi star orbital and the fact that this orbital contains a single electron. Now I would argue that the pi bond is outright broken, right? Because we have only one pi bonding electron and one pi antibonding electron. And so what to do with the pi bond is going to be different in this case than it was in the n pi star case. Uh, really quickly, though, let's talk about the n orbital. The n orbital is completely intact. The n orbital is just as it would appear in a ground state carbonyl compound at this level of approximation, right? And so we're going to draw a normal looking lone pair on oxygen to represent the n orbital level because this looks exactly like the n level in the ground state. And so those electrons are exactly where they would be in the ground state of a carbonyl compound. The only thing we have left to do here is to account for this pi electron. Well, using an analogous argument that we did for the pi star orbital, we can locate this electron on the atom that has the larger lobe in the pi orbital. And let's think back to polarized NBOs and how we think about those. The more electronegative atom is oxygen, and so it makes the most sense to localize that electron right here. And here we have it. This is a valid natural Lewis structure based on the electron configuration that's suggested by this orbital energy diagram. Before we move on though, it is worth keeping in mind that both the pi and pi star orbitals are delocalized. And the ordinary polarity of the carbonyl group towards oxygen kind of gets inverted upon pi pi star excitation since we're putting an electron in the pi star orbital which is polarized the opposite way of the pi orbital that's ordinarily filled. And so it's not so crazy based on that argument to consider both electrons living on the carbonyl carbon now and having the carbonyl oxygen formally positively charged. So an alternative resonance form where we represent both the pi and pi star electrons living on carbon is worth thinking through for the pi pi star excited state. And here the oxygen is formally positive, the carbon is formally negative, and you can verify that on your own. And so just to connect this structure with the orbital occupation and orbital energy diagram, the n orbital is still doing absolutely nothing uh, because it is completely unaffected by pi pi star excitation, at least at our level of approximation for the time being. The pi electron is now, we're saying, living on carbon because it does live on carbon to some extent, right? The pi orbital does encompass that carbon. And the pi star electron is now still living on carbon because again, this is the larger lobe. Uh, the larger lobe is located on carbon in that pi star orbital. And so it's spending a good deal of its time there. So this is a reasonable alternative resonance form for the pi pi star state. And I'll make the same point that I did for the n pi star state. Which representation is best depends profoundly on spin because whether the electrons quote unquote want to spend time near one another as they do in these charged uh, structures depends on the spin. And we'll get into that after we discuss the model of electron spin and the real difference between singlets and triplets in a future video.